Hi there. I want to welcome you. My name is David Greenberg. I'm an artist and an educator, and the focus of my work is natural law. I also touch on objective morality, human nature, consciousness, spirituality, and of course, freedom. And if you're someone like me who cares about freedom and wants to help to create a world of freedom, not just the relative freedom of having more purchasing power, but actual physically manifested freedom, then you are definitely in the right place. As always, I've prepared a very special and very valuable presentation for you. Today's presentation is called How to Raise Children, Natural Law Parenting That Generates Freedom. So let's go ahead and dive in. To kind of get you thinking about this and, and to start this process off, I want to ask you a couple of questions that I'd really like for you to consider. The first question is, how much do you care about the overall quality of parenting in the world? Is this something that you give any thought to at all? Maybe a little, maybe more. Is it something that you've considered? Something that's come to your attention in one way or another? Or is it something that maybe just when you saw my presentation, you became aware of it and started thinking about it? So I want to invite you to just be honest with yourself about where you're at, right? This is just a way for you to gauge where your consciousness is at with respect to this topic of discussion. So... If, you're, if you'd like to do so, I want to invite you to comment below the video what your thoughts are. Just give it some thought. And if you want to pause the video to think about it some more, that's great. In your opinion, do most people know how to raise their children? Do most people even know what that term means, to raise a child? What are your thoughts on this? How do you see the capabilities of most parents just from your own experience from your observations maybe even from your own personal experience again if you want to share that's great feel free to comment do you think most parents do a good job raising their children do you think that most children the way that they're raised the way that they go out in the world is reflective of their parents having done a, great, a good job or a great job of raising them again all i'm asking is that you be honest with yourself about your answers to these questions just as a way to start thinking about this topic a little deeper a little more closely what price do we all pay when children aren't raised correctly what is the cost to us to all of us together what is the result the outcome the consequence of not raising children correctly how do how is that experience how do we all experience that in the world so now i'm going to share with you what i think so I have personal experience. I was raised or my parents attempted to raise me. I've also interacted with many people, many parents over the last, well, I'm 53, but we'll say, you know, the last 40 or plus years where I've been paying attention. And in my opinion, and based on what I've come to understand, most parents do not know how to raise their children correctly. And that's a very definitive statement. And I can tell you that what I, from what I've learned, there is a correct way to raise children. And most parents do not know what that is. And part of the reason, a major reason why I wanted to create this presentation was to attempt to address that. Because this is really, really something very foundational in terms of the quality of the experience that we, we have in this world together. I also want to clarify something very important, and that is, as with 
almost all things in life, there is both an art and a science to raising children. And I'm going to specifically speak to the science in this presentation. And there's a reason for that. The reason is the art is up to the artist. What that means is if you, when you or any person decides to have children and to raise children, you get to decide within an infinite range of possibilities how you want to go out about doing that. And I would never pretend to come along and say, this is, these are the exact steps that I would expect you to do day by day in order to raise that child. That's not what we're doing here. So some people are going to misunderstand this. This is not a prescribed formula. This is not a step-by-step -step how to raise children every single day, the activity down to the details of the activities. That would be ridiculous. We're going to focus on principles, just like I do with all of my work. So if you're new to my work, one of the things that you're going to discover is that I'm always focusing on the principles, on the foundation. Because when we have a solid foundation, we can build many amazing structures on top of that. And that's, of course, is the art. So how you choose to raise your child, the kind of environment where you choose to live, the kinds of activities, that's all up to you. I would never, and no one should ever tell you how to do that. But when it comes to the principles, the, imp the first things, it does make a difference. And that, was, that is what we're going to talk about today. We also have to be really honest with ourselves if we're going to come up with solutions. And one of the things that we have to be honest about is the fact that culture spreads lies and disinformation about parenting. And that is done as a part of social engineering. That is part of as that is done basically to mold the minds of people to think in a certain way, in this case about parenting, so that they will act in a certain way. And I just want to throw in a, a mention here of a book called The End of All Evil by Jeremy Locke. I've spoken about this book a few times. So when I mention culture here, those of you who have read the book will recognize that reference because I'm referring to culture generally as the implementation of social engineering that is used by evil and authority to basically control, to control the minds of people, to spread the kind of ideology that they want to spread so that people believe that and then act accordingly. So in the case of parenting, just like in any other paradigm, culture is, has spread and continues to spread specific lies and disinformation that confuses people about what is what parenting entails and what is actually important when being a parent. So in order to expose their lies, let's discuss seven myths, seven incorrect beliefs about raising children. Number one, and folks, this is very, very common, more common than you think. Even if you don't believe this, this is a thing. Many people have come to believe that their children are their property. And as being their property, it follows logically that they must obey them or be punished. Almost like a slave. Imagine that. Imagine the mindset of someone who thinks that their children are their property. And yet, this is what many, many people think. And it, it can go on a continuum. Some people completely look at their children as their property, like I own you. And some people, it's somewhere in their mentation. It may not be in the forward part of their consciousness, but it's in there. It's somewhere in their conscious mind, in their subconscious, and they're operating according to that. So just imagine that thinking your child is your property. Another myth, and many people believe this, not necessarily everyone. Many people believe that only strict 
authoritative parenting can actually generate a moral adult. Only the strictest. Corporal punishment, sometimes yelling and screaming like a tyrant, acting like a tyrant, clamping down, do this or you're grounded. So authoritative parenting, and that can and does go into the realm of physical violence, but for the most part, it also manifests largely as I would call psychological violence, basically psychologically traumatizing the child by being a little tyrant, by being a, I wish it's not a little tyrant, by being a tyrant to the child and being extremely strict, having no sense of humor, no fun at all. It's all serious and it's all basically follow, you know, obey, obey, obey. So again, it's very closely related to that first myth. People actually believe this. Then we have the opposite extreme, the other side of the polarity. The, again, we see a lot of these polarities. So in this other extreme, which is more prevalent now than ever, is we should just let kids do whatever they want. So completely hands-off parenting. And again, yes, this is a thing. Yes, there are parents who think this way and act this way. And there are many, many people, and I've spoken to them, and I've met people like this. So I know for a fact that, parent, that there are people, and probably many people, who think this way. Just let them do whatever they want. So basically a minimalist approach complete abdication of any responsibility for the child. So just imagine that. Imagine the effect of that and what kind of results that's going to bring. Here's another one. This is one of my favorites. If I had a dollar or a gold coin maybe or anything of value for every time that someone spoke to me or wanted to make me feel like there was something wrong with me for not having kids, which I do not, then uh, I would be, in terms of financial wealth, I would be a very wealthy person. Because probably I've heard this thousands and thousands of times. And often I've heard it from people that don't even know me and I don't know them. Like we've literally just met and they think there's something wrong with me and maybe you've experienced this as well, because I don't, I don't consider it part of my duty to raise children. So it's almost like there's this, you've got to raise kids or there's something wrong with you. I mean, imagine that. Yes, of course, I understand that there is a natural desire built into us to procreate because without that, perhaps we wouldn't have the impetus to continue our species. So I, I get it that there's some, you know, built in technology, as it were, built in biology that that wants to propel us towards the tendency to raise kids. But given that we're human beings with higher consciousness, as I've talked about, and we have the ability to think at a higher level, it's very surprising to me that someone would embrace this idea that everyone, every single person should raise kids. And if they don't, they're weird, they're wrong, they're out of place, something's wrong with them. It's just really, really weird thinking to me. And yet there it is, one of the most common ways of thinking in the world. Many people, maybe even most people, think that there isn't really an objective, objectively correct way to raise a child. There isn't a formula, there isn't a foundation to follow, a blueprint. And this shows, in my opinion, this shows in the chaos that we see in the world around us with respect to children being raised. So imagine that. There's no right way to raise a child. It's whatever you come up with. Yeah, good luck with that. Obviously, we're going to be addressing that in today's presentation, as we are. But it's important to point out that many, many, many people think this way, and you may be one of them. So if that's you... I'm here to challenge you today. Another myth, and this is kind of similar to and related to the last one, is that the only way that you can learn how to be a parent is by doing it. That's it. 
you've probably heard people who are parents say things like that. Until you, until you do it yourself, you, you don't know what's involved. Now, I agree with respect to the art of parenting. Remember what I said earlier about the difference between art and science. I agree. In terms of the art of parenting, in terms of the nuance, the details, the, the many infinite choices, of course, just like everything in life, you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. But in terms of the science or the specifics, the principles, this notion that parenting can only be learned, you know, that's basically like saying the student can only learn principles by stumbling and failing. Well, what happens if the cost of one of those principles is your life? Is that the best optimal way to learn? For example, how to avoid certain types of danger? Just like that hands-off parenting. Child should just learn to not walk off the edge of a cliff. I mean, this is how ridiculous this is. I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, convey just how utterly ridiculous this is and how poorly thought out it is. That parenting can only be learned empirically. Again, there's always a part that you can only experience, the art of it. I'm talking about the science, the principles. And yes, there are principles to when it comes to parenting. This is very similar. Again, only existing parents can teach others how to raise children. People are going to use this one against me because I don't have children. And here I am talking about best practices and principles of parenting. Well, how can you talk about parenting? You actually have never raised a child. How, how can you consider yourself to speak about this topic? It's a completely nonsense notion that only someone who has actually raised kids can speak to the principles of raising children. Obviously, this is not true, but it is. I do want to point out because this is part of the conventional wisdom that culture has been spreading for a very long time, and, many, and that's why many, many people believe this. Even if they don't come out and say it openly, it's somewhere in their mind that they think that really... The only authority of parenting is parents. Some, and only the person who can actually speak out about parenting is someone who's done it. So complete nonsense, a complete myth. And uh, I'm happy to, you know, if someone wants to try to, if someone wants to attack me in an ad hominem way because I'm not a parent and I'm speaking out parenting, fine, do it. All you're going to do is just expose the level of consciousness that you're at. But the answer is, of course, Anyone can learn these principles and teach them. That's how it works. So this is probably the main point of this presentation, and, or at least one of the main points. So I want you to really, really contemplate this. A person who does not understand and act according to objective morality can never be a good parent. I want to say that one more time because I know this is going to be very offensive to certain people. And that's okay. And if you're offended by it, that's okay. Feel offended. That doesn't change the fact that this is true. A person who does not understand and act according to objective morality can never be a good parent. What is objective morality? I've covered this and will continue to cover it extensively in my work as part of teaching natural law. But objective morality is the fact that the difference between right and wrong action is objective, meaning it's inherent to nature. It's natural. We all know it. We all know it inherently. It's a truth. And it's easy to understand. And it's very simple. It basically consists of three things. Number one, you're always responsible for the consequences of your actions, all of them. Number two, you see yourself and others and you don't cause harm. You don't steal things that don't belong to you. You don't try to make people act in ways that they don't want to, to force, to coerce them. And you don't deceive others. You don't harm others in, in any way. You don't commit violence. And number three, you defend yourself 
and sometimes those you love, those closest to you, against the potential harm of others, whether it be other people or, other fo- or even forces of nature. So that's really what it means to be an objectively moral person. And if someone doesn't understand that deeply, they cannot be a good parent, period. This is foundational. This is prerequisite knowledge to being a good parent. And that's why anyone who wants to be a parent, who wants to raise children in an optimal way, should always first come to understand natural law and objective morality. So right and wrong are are inherent to nature. And basically what that means is we can develop our conscience. I spoke about conscience a lot in my understanding human nature presentation, but basically it's the inner knowing of right from wrong. We all have that inherently. So what that means is when people are born in the world, there is some aspect of them that already knows that. But because of where their consciousness is at, it has to be cultivated. And the way we cultivate that, of course, is through education, through many different lessons, many examples, through allegory, through practice, through interactions, and so forth. Because that's such an important part of raising a child, it's really, really important that the parent, that you as the parent, have achieved a certain level of mastery there. And it's not going to take a lifetime to achieve that mastery. Yes, you can study this material for a lifetime, but you can get this in enough time to master these principles by the time you're ready to have children. So when children are, aren't taught objective morality, when that's not reinforced, we're, we all suffer. And that is exactly what is happening right now in the world. That is exactly the, the experience that we're having together is children are coming into the world. They're not being taught these principles. They're not being reinforced. And we're suffering. And we're going to continue to suffer as long as that's true. So what I want to do now is let's talk about some of the consequences of bad parenting. Well, number one, you're going to have a child that's going to grow up without really, without knowing or even caring about right from wrong. They may have, they may still, they'll still have some inner sense of conscience. Every, we, unless you're a born psychopath, unless you're a primary psychopath, you're going to have some capacity to know right from wrong. But because it's never been reinforced and because this child has never seen their parents demonstrating a moral backbone, then they're going to, why would they care about it? They're going to drift towards their pleasures and they're going to, very likely, many of them are going to become bullies because they're going to say, well, I can get a, if I can get away with stuff, why not? They probably had a parent that was a bully too and they're just acting accordingly. Think back to what I said earlier about authoritative parenting. That's basically parents bullying their children. So I'm not saying every child's going to end up this way, but many do. Let me correct myself. It's not their nature. It becomes their condition. It becomes their way of being because of the way they were raised, or in this case, not raised. Then you have the other side of the coin. Children who are bullied, who won't stand up for themselves, who are basically the little sniveling snot-nosed child who cries in the corner anytime somebody even comes towards them. The perfect victim of bullying because they don't have, they never learned how to stand up for themselves or their rights. Again, due to the lack of teaching of principles, the lack of foundation. So you have this polarization. You have children who become bullies and children who become the bullied. What do you think happens to a, a, a foundation, a building, for example, if it doesn't have a solid foundation? Over time, it's going to probably crumble under its own weight. It's not, going to, it's not going to last. It's not going to thrive. A plant that's not able to throw down roots is not going to thrive. The child who doesn't have this foundation to stand on, this solid knowing that reality has got their back by means of objective morality, 
and natural law, they're going to struggle to find meaning and purpose in life. And they may, they may just chase pleasures. I know this from personal experience, folks, personal experience. This is part of my story. I can tell you definitively, and I've seen it enacted in many other people. I've, I, I travel as a lifestyle and I meet new people almost every day. And I ask people a lot of questions and I can tell you that a lot of people are struggling with this. Probably based on, if I were to use the sample size that I've spoken to, it's almost certainly the majority of people. And that's a problem. Why is that a problem? Because we're here for a reason. You are here for a reason. Your life has meaning. It has a purpose. And in order to help you, it's not the job of your parents necessarily to help you to figure it all out but it is their job as your guardians as your as your stewards to help you orient yourself in this reality so that you can go on to contemplate the deeper questions of life so when you have parents who don't do that their child's going to struggle this is all meaningless they're going to easily gravitate towards certain ways of thinking again, related to this idea that they don't stand up for themselves, then they're also not going to learn know how to learn because part of this principle-based education is to teach a child not what to know. It's not indoctrination. It's to teach them how to learn, how to acquire new knowledge. And if they don't know how to do that, guess what? Guess what's going to happen? Guess what does happen? Guess what happened to me and what happens to a lot of people? They fall prey to the deceivers, to the sorcerers, to the lies, to the smooth talkers, the charlatans. Yep, every single day. A sucker is born every day is speaking to those people who, who were not raised, those children who were not raised properly. They're the ones that become the suckers. So lacking this foundation, of course, the child is not going to know how to learn and they're going to struggle a lot in life as a result. They're going to suffer and they're going to cause others to suffer through their actions that are going to be based on often on incorrect information and lies. This one is... The social engineers love this one because essentially they're they are trying to mold people to have a miniature version of their ideology so they love it when this happens to a child what happens the child falls prey to all kinds of false ideologies like solipsism the belief that there is no truth or truth can't be known or it can't be conveyed it's all all of reality is just whatever you perceive in your head Moral relativism, this idea that there is no objective standard of, of right versus wrong. It's just whatever you get away with or whatever the most ruthless people in society think it is. Social Darwinism, this only the strong will survive. Only the most ruthless get to rule. All these completely ridiculous, false, and nonsense notions that have nothing to do with objective truth, that have nothing that have no semblance at all to the way reality actually works and yet the child will oftentimes start to believe this and will actually design you know will operate their entire lives based on these incorrect beliefs i you can think of it as like the weeds because the parent if we use the analogy of weeding so if we think about this analogy of the of the garden and weeding the garden imagine the the garden is like the child's mind so when the parent properly teaches the child how to tend their mind part of that will be look you're going to need to weed the garden every once in a while every so often here's how to identify the weeds here's what you do as long as you keep doing that the plants that you want to grow and flourish will so think of these ideologies like the weeds that are just growing when when the child doesn't know how to weed them out of their mind and how could they if they weren't taught any principles from their parents do you really think they're going to just stumble across this knowledge 
Do you really think that that's how a child's mind is going to work? That they're just going to figure this out all out on their own? Let's get real, folks. That's not going to happen. And of course, the social engineers love this, which is why they continue to encourage bad parenting, because it continues to generate children who, who are solipsists, moral relativists, and social Darwinists, among others. This one, I can, again, I'm, I'm the poster child for this one for my whole life. I admit that. The child becomes someone who just chases pleasure, right? Because we have this inherent, we have an ego, and it's natural to have an ego, and at no point in my work do I ever say that we should suppress the ego or that the ego is bad. It's all about putting everything in context. But when the ego is allowed to dominate, and when that natural tendency to seek pleasures is allowed to become the first thing, the principle, the ideology, then basically you have a child who then becomes an adult, of course, who all they care about is me, 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 what's in it for me? How can I feel good today? What can I do to feel good about myself? Even if I have to step over, hurt someone else, oh, someone else, I had to take this from someone else, but it doesn't matter. I feel, I feel good right now. Oh, that feels really good. You know, imagine the base, how, how low a level of consciousness this is. And I want you to go back to the questions that I asked at the beginning of the presentation and really think about how many people operate this way and how many people learned to operate this way based on the parenting or the lack of parenting that they had. And just be honest with yourself about it, as I have. Again, another reason why the dark occultists, the social engineers who run the institutions of this world, why they love this paradigm of a lack of parenting is because these children are perfect candidates to grow up and join their institutions of violence. They go, they're perfect candidates to become lawyers, to work in law enforcement, the police, government, public education, and the mainstream media, among others. The medical profession, mainstream medicine, they're perfect for this. Entertainment and Hollywood, poorly raised children are the perfect candidates to take on these immoral professions and to support the continuity of slavery through these public institutions. So, of course, the social engineers want to continue that. So just think about that in context to how this reality that we're living in is perpetuated by each successive generation. And, and also think about what's going to happen to this reality, to this paradigm, when we start raising our children correctly, which I'm going to talk about shortly about the principles of raising a child correctly. So just imagine how much of a causal factor this is, how this is a root causal factor to the conditions that we find ourselves in as a civilization. So let me just put a really, really fine point on this just to say this definitively, and this is definitively a true statement. A world based on institutionalized violence which we do live in, this is the world we live in right now, can persist only when children are not raised properly. That's it, folks. This world, these, these institutions that perpetuate violence and immorality, the inversion of morality, to say it a different way, when children are raised properly, these institutions will fall apart like a house of cards. And the reason is because a child who is raised correctly, knowing right from wrong, knowing truth from deception, knowing how to learn, knowing how to stand up for themselves, caring about others, having a balanced mind, that kind of child is going to stand up to wrong and they are going to confront it when they see it. And they ain't going to take it. Ain't going to take it, folks. When children are raised correctly, evil and violence are confronted 
and therefore contained. Notice I never said that they would never exist because that's magical thinking. That's, that's dreaming. That is dreaming. If you think we're, there's never ever going to be any violence in the physical reality, you're, you're dreaming. You're lying to yourself. This is a part of the reality here. And this is, there's a reason why that's so, because we're here to learn how to, our relationship with good versus evil. We're here to learn that and master that. So of course those things are going to exist. But when a child is raised correctly, they're not going to stand for it. They're going to confront things as they come up and face them. And they're going to become an adult who does the same thing. So this is Jonathan Frenzel of Im Lichte, my German project, and Light on Us, my English project, where we speak about natural law, true freedom, morality, and the ending of all human slavery. I'm the sponsor of this presentation today of David Greenberg and his project freedomvibe.art. I really want to say thank you, David, for doing the great work and all the stuff that you do on a daily basis. And for you out there who's watching this presentation, stay till the end and enjoy. Thank you very much. So now we can finally answer the question, what does it mean from a principal's perspective to raise a child? What is the actual meaning? Why do we say raise a child? Why do we even use that term? That's a very, it's kind of a very specific term, isn't it? Well, the reason is very simple. Raising refers to the raising of the child's consciousness. So raising a child, what that means is we're here to help them to raise their consciousness up to a level where they largely choose to act morally and in harmony with natural law and the ways of nature, the true laws of nature. So that is the science of raising a child. A child comes into the world, they have a certain level of consciousness, and we're here to help them to raise that consciousness, wherever it is. And every child potentially comes in the world with a different starting point. But whatever that is, as their parents, we're here to help them raise that consciousness. How we do that is the art of it. And I wouldn't presuppose to dictate to anyone how that's done. You, that's the part that you get to choose as the parent. But from a principal's perspective, that's what you're doing. You're raising their consciousness. You're helping them to understand, to grasp a deeper understanding of the reality that they find themselves in and the operating conditions of that reality so that they can master living in this reality and learn the things that they need to learn as part of their experience. So what are these principles? What are the actual principles of raising children? Well, as you can no doubt guess, they are fairly few and very simple. It is true that children are naturally vulnerable. They're vulnerable physically by nature of their condition. And they're also vulnerable mentally until they're able to fully mature. So even though a child is subject to natural law, and objective morality, just like an adult is, there's no exceptions. Because of their vulnerable state, we as their stewards, as their guardians, can help to defend and protect them during that vulnerable stage. It's also important to remember that children are not the property of the parents. Your children are not your property, period. You don't own them. You do not get a, a magical own, certificate of ownership of your children just because you gave birth to them and you're paying, maybe perhaps you're paying for things that they need or you're working as many parents do to take care of their needs in the world. That's the, the uh, exchange for that is not that you get to own them. Incorrect. They are the charge of your stewardship. They're the charge of your stewardship. You're basically agreeing to be their steward. You're agreeing to be their guide. 
it's almost like a physically manifested spiritual guide if you want to think about it because all spiritual growth in this reality happens in this reality. This is where the rubber meets the road in terms of spirituality. So in a way you are kind of like a spiritual guide and you're, you're kind of like the guy. It's like the new kid that shows up in school and there's another child is assigned to basically be their guide to help them show the ropes, help show them the ropes. That's, that's basically what it is. Obviously there's, it goes deeper than that, but there is no implication of ownership here. The other thing is that parenting can, and I think should be fun and enjoyable. I mean, I, I, in, no, in no way am I trying to say that this is only a serious matter and that there is no fun to be had and joy uh, or, you know, some people are going to say, oh, because you're talking about so serious things, you're trying to take away all the fun of parenting. Not, a, not in the least. In fact, the opposite is true. When you can master these principles, you actually unlock more p possibilities for enjoyment. And I would say that the children who are suffering, who are miserable, are the, the most miserable children are the ones whose parents don't have a clue, are completely clueless. And they themselves are completely lost. They're, they're like little children. They were, because they were never raised. So you have children raising children. Does that sound like fun to you? So when you have parents who are mature, who've taken the time to understand principles, who've really worked on themselves and created a certain level of mastery and they, they've mastered the basics, and they are comfortable teaching those things to their children, then all of a sudden you have all this space to be creative. You have all this space to, to make it so much more enjoyable for the adventure, for the travel, for the exploration, for the creativity, for the projects, for the ideas, for creating art, for the science projects, for all of it. Because you got principles out of the way you got the principles out of the way. Now you can get down to the fun part. Let's talk about the seven objectives of right parenting. So what are they exactly? And this is really the heart of it. And it, again, if you're someone that you're already a parent or you're about to become a parent or you're strongly leaning towards becoming a parent or you really want to become a parent, you can benefit from this. And even if you're not, even if you're someone like me who probably won't be a parent, you can still benefit from understanding this because then you can help others to understand it. So everybody can benefit from this. So what's the first principle of good parenting? Again, we talked about earlier, children are naturally vulnerable, both physically and mentally. So part of being a good parent, and I would say this is almost the first layer, the foundational layer, is you protect them. You do whatever you can to optimize their physical well-being and to protect and defend them from any kind of harm, whether it's the harm of other people or some force of nature or anything else, or even from them making a bad decision, which they are likely to do. No surprise on this one. Teach them natural law and objective morality. And this is, this is a teaching, a lesson that's going to go on continuously in many different ways. And through the art of parenting, you're gonna discover and implement many different ways to do this, whether it's sitting down and explaining principles, whether it's showing them something allegorical, having them read an allegorical book or watch an allegorical show uh, or watch another lesson or doing an activity or debriefing them about something that happened where maybe they acted contrary to morality and there was a consequence and now they have to figure out what happened so there's many many different ways but throughout the entire continuum of when you're raising that child and particularly in the beginning and yes this can start at any age there is no lower age limit for this there is no age that at which you need to introduce this topic and it can start literally at any time you teach them natural law and of course that presupposes that you as a parent are continuing to educate yourself about natural law and objective morality, that you have a good grasp of it, but you also continue to learn and grow in that regard so that you can be the teacher and also the student because you will also continue to learn from your own child's learning and their experiences, you'll continue to learn how it works too. So it is a mutual benefit. Teaching them how to defend themselves. 
something that is so, so lacking, so lacking. Your child needs to learn to stand up for themselves. This is part of being a moral being. There are no exceptions. They're not going to be able to delegate this to someone else. And part of the a large part of why our society is so immoral is many people go around thinking that they can delegate their defense to others. Complete nonsense. So part of raising a child, and this will also help them, of course, with their self-confidence, with their self-esteem, because that is part of that, with their sense of self-worth and their sense of being able to take care of themselves in the world, is you teach them how to defend themselves. And by the way, I should also note that self-defense is not just physical. It is also physical, and it should be, but it's also mental self-defense. And I would say maybe even as important, if not more important than physical self-defense is teaching the child how to defend their own mind so that people can't get into their mind and, and inject wrongful ideas into their mind or manipulate them. So that's also a very important part of defense. Teaching them life skills. Again, this is where the art meets the science and all the joy and the, the variety of experiences. There are certain foundational skills like how to eat, how to acquire the food you need, then how to prepare it, how to eat properly, how to enjoy that process. But there's many other skills, how to repair clothing, how to build and construct, how to work with basic tools in a workshop, how to be creative, life skills, how to, how to communicate, how to interact with new people, how to suss people out where they're coming from. So many different things. So basically you're teaching them it's you're showing them the ropes you're teaching them life skills that's that are going to give them a leg up not necessarily going to be able to teach them everything so you always start with of course the things that are most foundational and then kind of work your way up from there and then and then allow the child to explore and discover the unique abilities that that they are particularly drawn to you teach them the trivium and truth discovery tools you teach them the trivium you teach them how to discern the truth, how to acquire knowledge, how to develop their own internal bullshit meter so they can smell the stinking, rotting bullshit that authority through culture attempts to hoist on us every single day through their complete nonsense. This complete, this society, this civilization that, that they want us to buy into, which is a complete fabrication. It's complete nonsense. It has nothing to do with actually being a natural human being. So you teach the child how to figure that out for themselves. And of course, you're not telling them, you're not indoctrinating them. And this is a point that some people are, are going to not get, which is why I want to emphasize it. You're not telling them what to think. You're telling them, you're teaching them how to think and specifically how to learn. So the trivium comes to mind. There are other tools as well, but basically you're giving them the toolkit for lifetime mastery. Of course, then you start to encourage them as they start to build up this solid foundation of, who, of their unique person, their identity, they're gonna start to discover those unique gifts that they have. Some people may tend towards singing or dancing or performing or painting or drawing, other creative endeavors, engineering, inventing, Whatever those unique abilities are, you start to encourage them to, to, do, to take that on and you've given them the tools for them to have enough self-confidence to go for it. So now it's just encouragement. You know, you're not necessarily, they, they, they're going to surpass you in certain things. You know, your child may become a better singer than you. So it's not a matter of teaching them all the techniques specifically. It's about helping them to cultivate it within themselves. And they're going to be able to figure that out from act, operating from a point of higher consciousness. That's really what it's all about, getting them to, raising them to that level of consciousness where they can take on these new skills and abilities. Great. So now we've come to the seventh principle of good parenting, and that is to encourage your child to discover their true mission and purpose in life. And yes, folks, 
we all have a purpose. We are, life has meaning. We're here for a reason. And each of us needs to discover that for ourselves. No one can tell you exactly what your mission is, but you as a parent, first of all, you can discover this for yourself. It can be discovered. And then you as a parent can help your child discover it for themselves as well. But no wonder that we struggle to get to this level of self-exploration when we're so confused about the basics, when, when as a civilization, we, we don't even understand right from wrong. We don't understand largely truth from lies. And we're not teaching that to our children. So no wonder we never get to the real good stuff. So this is why this is foundational and why it is built atop of the other principles that we spoke about. Because once you've helped the child raise its consciousness, his or her consciousness to a certain level, then the child is ready to start the deeper exploration and to start to really understand and connect with why they are here. Your role as a parent, of course, is to encourage that process and to make it relatable based on your own experience, but of course, to allow them to discover it on their own. Now, I want to make up a certain point here, and this is going to be extremely offensive to certain people, and, and that's exactly the way I want it to be, is if you are imparting a religious doctrine on your child, then you are basically indoctrinating them. You're not educating, you're indoctrinating them. And a lot of parents do this. And a lot of parents do this thinking that they're doing the right thing and thinking that they're helping their child with moral development. That is untrue. Your child's spiritual connection to creation is their own. It's not yours. You have no say in their relationship with the creator and with creation. You can be a great example. You can optimize the experience to give them the best chance of discovering it for themselves, but it's not your business what they think or believe. Uh-uh. So stop indoctrinating children into a religion. Stop indoctrinating children into a religion. This is antithetical to being a good parent all of the time. And again, I can speak from personal experience here because my parents, specifically my mother, who became very religious, and I just want to say that I don't hold a grudge against her today for this because all has been forgiven because we've talked about it and I, you know, I have a deep understanding of what happened and why, but I'm just relating that this has happened to me, that I had a parent that attempted to hoist upon me religious beliefs and it's extremely uncomfortable and it has nothing to do with raising consciousness. All it does is create resentment. All it does is, is ultimately create, mold the my, child's mind in a certain way to go along with a certain set of beliefs and it has nothing to do with what we've been talking about in this presentation. And I'm not an atheist, as people will know, I know, I know, it's not a matter of belief. I know that there are higher powers in the universe than, than human beings. I know that we are not the pinnacle of power in this creation and that there are forces that have set in motion the laws of creation that were not done by human beings. So I get that. And I have a personal and direct connection with creation within myself. I don't need any religion to do that. And I would not need any, as a child, I would not have needed that in order to cultivate these things. All I would have needed is a parent to raise me in the way that we've talked about in this presentation. Because when you indoctrinate your child, you're basically robbing, you're stealing from them. You're robbing them of the right to their own spiritual development. Let's, let's just put a fine point on this to make it as offensive as possible to certain people. When you indoctrinate your child into your religion, Catholicism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, whatever it is, I don't care. When you indoctrinate your child, you are stealing from them. You are stealing their right to their own spiritual development. You're taking it away from them. Imagine that. And that harm that you're causing them does 
have consequences. Yes, it does. And yes, it will. And it is already. This is, it is already having consequences in the world. And it will continue to so long as parents do that. So don't ever do that. It's one of the few things that we shouldn't do as parents is to impart a religious thought process on our child. So what do we do instead? It's very simple. You encourage the child to cultivate their own personal spiritual correct connection to creation. You encourage that child to explore what that means for them, to discover it for themselves. Because as, a, as, as an aspect of creation, we all live inside of the all. We are all part of it. We are inherent to nature and to creation, and we are aspects of it. So you and I, we have the spark of the divine within us already. We simply need to discover it for ourselves and to create a relationship it in the way that we choose to do so, each of us in our own way. So that is the role of the parent with respect to spiritual development is to, yes, it, you can expose the child to different ways of thinking. Yes, you can make them aware of all the different spiritual teachings and ideas and even the religious principles from an esoteric perspective, not from an exoteric perspective. Perhaps I'll talk about that more in a different presentation. But ultimately, you're helping them to discover it for themselves and not to box their consciousness into a religion. So what's going to happen as more and more parents raise their children correctly? What is going to be the consequence, the positive consequences of this kind of change? Well, the child being raised in this way is going to naturally, naturally accept responsibility for themselves. So think of the old, think of the current paradigm where ch parents often find themselves having to tell their children to do their chores, do clean up your room, boy, clean up your room, girl. All that goes away because children who understand how it works at a deeper level and have a sense of self-worth are going to want to naturally take care of themselves. They are naturally going to take care of themselves and their environment and others. And they're not going to need to be told to do these basic chores because they're going to know that they're important in context and why they're important. So just amazing. You can get rid of the chore list and having to tell your children to clean up the room because they're going to do it themselves. They're going to accept responsibility for themselves. That's one of the, that's an amazing benefit. If that, that, that alone already should be a seed change for everyone. Another one that's really big is they're going to stand up to authority because they're going to recognize that authority invested in others is an illusion. They're not going to tolerate bullying. They're going to stand up for themselves and they're going to stand up for others if necessary, because they're, they're going to recognize others in themselves and themselves in others. They're going to see the connection. So bullying goes away, bullying is put in its place, and they call bullshit on authority. And that's a great thing, and that's going to start to help this house of cards to tumble. They're also going to develop what I like to call a healthy blend of arrogance and compassion. I know that sounds like a contradiction, so let me explain it. Arrogance is not a negative thing. Arrogance is, is the unflinching recognition of one's own self-worth. So when I'm arrogant, I know I'm of value and no one's going to talk me out of that. So it's going to come across as arrogant to someone because an arrogance is seen as negative because we're so used to living in a world where people put each other down or people think that they're not as valuable as they are. So you're going to have on the one hand arrogance, the ch being the child, but on the other hand, they're going to have compassion. They're going to care. It's not going to be only about themselves. They're going to know that it's not just them and they're going to be able to feel for others even as they recognize their own value and that's the most positive blend of those two attributes that we can imagine of course they're going to start to unlock those higher mental gifts and that creativity drawing from a deeper imagination from a deeper sense of connection to nature to creation because they again they have that solid foundation they know they have a sense of knowing a sense of confidence and they're not struggling with the basics so now they their mental space is opened up to more exploration 
and it's going to allow them to go deeper into those levels of creativity that we all frankly crave as human beings. We're all going to suffer less. In fact, raising children properly when done largely in the majority is literally going is literally is a key. It's not like a key, it is a key to unlock the prison and to open up and expose the paradise that we can create here on earth. This is a true statement and this is the motivation behind why I made this presentation. It's really important to understand that we're all going to win when children are raised correctly. We're all going to win. And I'm not saying that it's going to be in a certain way. I'm not trying to say it, it's going to be even in a specific way because I don't know because it's not up to me. I'm not, I'm not creating this reality. I'm co-creating it with you. All I'm saying is that when we raise children, our children correctly on principles that you and I and all of us, we will in fact experience more freedom. And that's really the point. I want to thank you so much for your attention today. I really appreciate you joining me in this journey. It's been my pleasure to share this knowledge with you. I'd like to invite you to help me to give back if you got value here. Please like this video. Comment below anything at all, even just a thank you or any thoughts. If you disagree with something, comment that below too. I welcome respectful discussion even when people don't agree with me. I want to invite you to subscribe or follow wherever you're watching this video. I do publish on a couple of different platforms, so you might be on YouTube, it might be on a different platform. So either subscribe or follow. And of course, share this video with everyone, with everyone you know, because again, whether you're already a parent, whether you're thinking of becoming a parent, whether you're about to become a parent, or whether you have no desire to become a parent, people will, each of those cases, people can benefit from this knowledge. So please share it. My website, freedomvibe.art, that's freedomvibe.art. If you need to reach me directly, you can also email me at david at freedomvibe.art. I appreciate you so much. Thank you again, and I'll see you very soon.